Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to talk about water level probes. So if yours are leaking or you're just curious to learn more about them, then stay tuned as we're going to take a quick look at what they're for, how they work and how to repair yours if they go wrong. So let's start with a basic overview of what they are and what they do. These probes come with both the dual boiler and the oracle machines. There are three probes on the steam boiler and two on the coffee boiler. Their purpose is to monitor how much water you have inside the boilers and most importantly tell the machine when there is enough water in there before it turns up the heat. If these weren't here and for some reason you had no water in the boiler the element would get too hot and quickly burn out. So how do they work? Well, let's look at the steam boiler. Like I said, there are three probes. The one with the green wire, or black sometimes, is connected to ground. The one with the blue senses water at the bottom of the boiler, and the red one is measuring water at the halfway point. You can see here how the length of the probes are different and how they look inside the boiler. The lower level probe with the blue wire is there to sense if the boiler can be switched on. You can see the tip is positioned just above the element. This is to ensure it's fully submerged before it's allowed to get hot. The upper probe with the red wire is there to tell when the boiler has enough water in and if it does it can switch off the pump. This is about the halfway point. The earth probe is what the other two probes communicate with. Water is conductive so the other two probes can use this to send a signal out, kind of like a beacon, to measure when water is present. To be a bit more specific, a signal is sent out about 2 volts down both the upper and the lower probes every 1.5 seconds. If the signal remains at 2 volts, referred to as a high signal, then nothing in between the probe and the ground has affected it, i.e. no water is present. However, if water was present, then the signal would travel through the water and into the ground probe. This will pull the 2 volts down to 0 volts, which is referred to as a low signal. You can see this taking place on my scope. Let's drain some water from the boiler, just enough so that the high probe with the red wire will notice. Once this happens, it should tell the pump to refill again. Now we'll wait until the machine gets to temperature, as it's not even checking at this point during the warm up. It seems to check at the very start and then again once it's reached temperature. Ok now you can see the signal starting to come through on the scope from the red wire. Instantly the machine sees this and turns on the pump. Once the signal gets pulled to ground the pump will stop. Alright so that's the technical part out of the way. Let's talk about how these probes can fail. When you can repair them yourself and then when you'll need to buy new ones. There are usually only two reasons you'll need to buy new ones. Firstly, the metal tab on the top can sometimes get so corroded it falls off. The other reason is the ceramic housing has become cracked. All the other issues are to do with O-rings basically, so you can repair those yourself. You can find a video on replacing the blue O-rings in the link above. But today I want to focus on the remaining fault that can happen on these, which is the tiny internal o-ring wearing out. This causes water to come up through the centre of the probe. You can see a good example of that here on this machine. So let's take a look how we can fix this. First, make sure the machine is cooled right down. You really don't want a face full of steam. I've done this several times. Then, remove the three spade connectors from the probes. If these are rusted on then you'll have to do this fix with them attached. Then pull out the retaining clips and remove the probes from the machine. This is a good time to check they are clean from scale. It's very common to see build up where they touch the water. A fine grit sandpaper is good for cleaning these up. Thank you. 
Then you need to use something sharp to remove the e-clip on the top. Be careful not to let it spring off as it's very easy to lose. Once this is off, this should allow you to lift up the ceramic shield enough to get to the faulty o-ring inside. Use some small pliers or tweezers to get the old o-ring out. Make sure you're really careful here as it's very easy to crack that ceramic uh, housing. Slide on the replacement o-ring, I'll leave a link to these in the description. Then carefully stretch it over that metal collar and into place. Once it's over, use the tip of a small screwdriver to make sure it's sitting inside of the uh, housing. So to put them back together, use some small pliers to get the earring back in place. Again, be very careful here because they, they do tend to spring off. Then we'll replace the outer O-rings and apply a little grease and put them back in the machine. Time to switch it on and give it a test. Looking good, 